We are going to discuss how to establish a good foundation for tonal improvisation. I will start with the C major scale so that it's easy to see what is going on. So, of course, C major scale, as you, if you had piano lessons, you had to play it. For the beginning, you can simply put a 5-3 chord on each note of the scale. So... And just listen to the quality of each chord. So, in tonal harmony, that, um, the three functions, the three main functions in a key are tonic, subdominant, and dominant. So, that would be scale degree one, scale degree four, scale degree five, and five, of course, leads back home to one. So, one, four, and five that I just played, um, they are basically the foundation of tonal harmony, because Max Reger, a uh, uh, German romantic composer, he said that all of the chords, all of the tonal harmony can be reduced to three functions, which is tonic, subdominant, and dominant. So same with him playing in church services. Um, most of the hymnody, it's of course in four parts, which I will discuss later, but all of those chords you can group to those three functions. So if we just listen again to one, four, and five, all, all three of those are major keys. So if we go by their substitutes, meaning if I go a third down from one, third down is A, harmony is six. Let's say four, which is subdominant. Third down is B, scale degree two, a minor chord. And then if, if we do the same with scale degree five, which was dominant. So we got three minor chords, which are A minor, D minor, E minor. So now we basically covered from C to A. The only one that's left is scale degree seven, which we will let it sit on the side for now. In tonal harmony, when we discuss how to uh, navigate voices, we will talk about four voices, namely soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, because it's, of course, based on vocal music. So when we talk about those four voices, if you open a hymnal, it will mostly have harmonizations in four voices, because that's the standard. Um, if we talk about four voices, uh, we have to know how to arrange them. Of course, you have the soprano, which will be the choral melody, the hymn melody, or some tune that you are trying to harmonize or improvise. Um, so, of course, that will be in the soprano, mostly. Um, if we think about the other important voice, that would be the bass, because bass, bass, meaning the basis of the harmony, it will be played, of course, in the pedal. Um, and the two inner voices, I think the best way to begin is just to keep it as close as possible to the soprano. Meaning, if let's say soprano is C, I want a harmony of C major, this is the soprano, bass will be C, and alto and tenor will be right here. So it is a good thing to keep it closer to the soprano. I know that most of the people, when they start improvising or like searching harmony, the usual habit is to have the soprano melody in the right hand and chord in the left hand. And it's usually somewhere down below which can work, but it's a problem if you want to establish a good foundation for building upon it, you know, to, to learn harmonies like and so on. I think it's good to keep it close to the soprano to begin with, and then we can keep building upon it. If we go from chords to chord, the first way of connecting chords is to keep what's there, meaning if you have a C major chord, which we have C, E, and G. G major chord, of course, you hear the note, it's G. So if you can keep the common tone in both chords, namely in C major, in G major, the note G, that's a really good way of controlling the voice leading, to, to, just to establish a good foundation. So let's go from C harmony, from one to five and back to one. So here we go. And I'll do it again. As you can see, alto hasn't moved. Here. While tenor just went to the closest possible position. And by 
when I say closest possible position, I simply mean if you're talking about G major harmony, that can be all of these notes, anything but G, B, and D, anything that belongs to the 5-3 chord of G major. So you just go to the closest position that there is belonging to G major. So let's look at the tenor now. Going to D, because it's G, B, D, and back to C major. So the rule is simply to keep close to the soprano. Um, as you can see, I connected one, five, and one. Let's connect one, four, and one. Here you can notice that C stayed because it's a common tone in both chords. C major and F major. Both have C. So you just keep that, don't, for now, for the beginning, don't jump around with, just keep, you know, keep it disciplined, keep it controlled. Because I read somewhere that the true freedom comes from discipline. So this is a good way to establish good foundations. Um, continuing from there, uh, I just talked about how to go from C to G and C to F. If we look in the pedal, what does that mean? From C to G, it's a distance of a fourth, interval of a fourth. And C to F, it's also a fourth, just in the other direction. So in tonal harmony, fourth and fifth are basically the same interval. Because if you go up a fifth, from C you get to G. If you go down a fourth, from C you get to G. So that's the same thing. Let's just summarize. When you're moving uh, from one chord to the other, and those two chords are distanced by a fourth or a fifth, you keep one voice that's common. Let's see what happens if I go from D to A. As you can see, the same thing. A, which is the common, stays. Part two. If we go a third away from the chord. So let's go back to C major. Let's go a third down to A minor and back. So what happened there? Bass went down a third and, of course, back. But when you see what happened in the voices, only one voice moved. These two voices stayed where they are because they are common, two common tones. The C major and A minor chord share those two notes. So you just keep it there, don't move it, just keep it where it is. And the last thing, if we go, we covered of course, fourth, third, and now let's see what happens if we go a second away, which the most common one is going from four to five. So let me just demonstrate what everybody does. That's a no-no, because you will come up with fifths, or you will come up with octaves. So you, you, you are trying to avoid that. So in order to avoid it, there is a term called contrary motion, meaning you will go against the bass. If bass goes up, everything else will go down. So let's see what happens here. Going from four, it has to go down, it will go here. Not up, but down. And same if you go in the other direction, going, let's say, from six to five. And let's go to four. Let's go to three. Let's go to two and one. So we, just to summarize, we covered uh, all the possibilities of connecting chords, uh, just to, you know, to, to establish a good foundation. It was a fourth, up or down, you keep what's there. It, a third, up and down, you again keep what is there, what is common. And a second, you can't keep anything, you just have to go the country motion. If bass goes up, everything else goes down. So, in order to practice that, you can just uh, come up with a bass line. Let's say a scale. You can play a scale in the pedal board. And then harmonize. So in order, if we're starting low, I will have to go down with uh, my hands, meaning I have to start high. So here we go. And this chord we will discuss later. I, I won't complicate things with it for now. Um, that covers everything that you can basically do and how to navigate chords, five, three chords in a key. One way of practicing how to go from one chord to the another, you can just come up with a bass line, something like... And then following the rules that I just explained, Start, you know, with a C major. And then let's 
go step by step. This is a fourth down, you keep G, it's over here. Five to six is a step up, so a second. Bass will go up, everything else will go down. Here we go. Then I went to F, which is a third down, you keep what's there. Same going to D, a third down, you keep what's there. Two going to five, D going to G, is a fourth up, meaning you will keep what's there, that's D. And back home to C. So you can just maybe even take a, a hymnal, open any hymn, and see, you know, just take the bass line. Forget about what's, you know, the melody. Just take the bass line and try to do an exercise like this. Just take it, forget about all the other voices, just the bass, and just try to harmonize the bass in this way. It will teach you how to control the voice leading and establish a good foundation for everything else. Next, I'm going to talk about modulation, meaning um, in church service, you might have a situation where um, one hymn is, let's say, in G major, for example. There. And other hymns, how about Holy, 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 will be in D major. So the question is, how do you get from one key to the other? This is a very basic example. So, of course, first hymn uh, will end in G. And then we have to see what is, again, common in both G major and D major. G major chord itself is a tonic, meaning scale degree one in G major. And it also exists in D major, where it's scale degree four. There it is. So, in order to modulate, you simply have to find a common chord uh, that exists in both keys, and in your head you have to flip, you know, you kind of have to just like put the different glasses on, you know, one glasses will just give you a, a view of G major, and the other set will give you a view of D major, but the chord will be there, you just kind of shift it into a different territory. Um, so here's a demonstration. major, this is D major. And here we are, D major. So this is a very basic uh, example how to modulate. If we go into something more advanced, let's say we are in C major, and next hymn will be in E flat major. So. Uh, example of C major hymn. Um. So here we have C major. If we are going to E flat, if you see, there aren't many options that you can have. Let me just play chords that are in E flat. It's pretty far away from C major. However, if you think of something called minor four, which is a very good trick in modulating, minor four in C major is F minor. It's perfectly valid, you can use it, it's not a problem. Um, so if we go from one in C major to four, minor four, that minor four is two in E flat. So that minor four can take you pretty far away. You know, it, it's not just closely related keys, but you know, C, C major from e, fl e flat major is three flats away. So it's pretty distant. So here is an example. If we ended the hymn on... But I, nothing comes to mind right now, but you just pick it up from there. Also, another way of modulating is just to get, just to move from one key to another. Uh, your modulations, of course, in the beginning, when you're trying to figure out how modulations work, well, they should be like this. Just use one chord and go from one key to the other. Once you master that technique, then you can expand that what happens in the middle, meaning from C major to 
G major, you can go over like five different keys. Um, let me show an example how to go from C major to G major through two keys. Here it is. Here is A minor. Here is C sharp minor. And back to G. There. So basically everything is possible. But the, the thing is that simply that control has to be there. And all of those examples are diatonic. So if we're talking about diatonic, of course, it's a common chord technique. The second possibility is to use chromaticism. And chromaticism, it comes from a Greek word chromos, which means color, meaning if you have C, C if, if it becomes C sharp, it is the same scale degree. So you don't change scale degree, but you change the color of it, meaning C and C sharp in C major, they are on the same, on the same, you know, line, basically, you know, I don't know, in, in, in treble clef, it's in the, what, third space. So that doesn't change. You just put a sharp sign, it is the same degree. So that's the difference between diatonic, which would be the note moved, and chromatic note didn't move, but it just changed the color. So here, an example is going from C to A. From C major to, of course, uh, diatonically with the A minor, but if you just ma manipulate that C to C sharp, this is A minor. Now with C sharp, there's that chromatic change. The color changed, and that already took you further away from, let's say, diatonic, simple diatonic modulation would take you. Next step in learning how to improvise is develop the movement of uh, voices. So I will focus on the soprano. Um, what I discussed earlier of, is, of course, chordal uh, connections, voice leading. So we will keep all that, more or less, because that's the foundation that you need to build upon. To solo out, I will just put it on the swell, and on the great I can just set a forefoot, just to have a clearer uh, melody than the accompaniment. Um, and here's an example. So when you move in the, the voice in the right hand, that's, that's more free. It's just... Where does it begin and where does it end? Here's an example. Right? We went from C to G. C is one chordal of C major, one, one let's say, chordic space going to G. If we go from C to D, and so on. So it is basically where on the beat, where does that melody end? and everything else in between you can just fill with notes. And the best judge or the best uh, critique when you're practicing is your ear. So if you end up with something like this is better than this, right? And something like, I don't know, it's a seven, but still I, I would prefer this note or maybe this note. It's this seven just as a passing things like that. And just go from there. That will give you a solid foundation and just keep building from there. Let's say you have the end of service, the end of mass, and you want to improvise a toccata. So again, you just pick a harmonic idea, harmonic progression, which I've, I have been using in all these improvisations. And here is an example. And so on. This is just a little chunk. So, of course, you can just keep expanding, take a hymn, do any of these ideas. And, of course, as I said earlier, your best judge is your ear. Just listen to as much music as possible, not just organ music, orchestral music, piano music, just to get ideas and use them in harmonic uh, explorations, exercises, whatever you practice in order to get to the uh, level where you're basically not thinking about harmony, you're just listening to it and playing on the organ. Happy practicing.